Hey guys, I'm here to talk about 15 beauty myths. So stick around, I think these are awesome myths. Really think you're gonna learn something new, so let's get into it. Okay, so my first myth is that oil causes pimples. I used to believe this all the time. You know, you think, oh, they have oily skin, you're gonna get pimples. Or if you put oil on your face, you're gonna get pimples. This is totally a myth. First of all, oily skin, does not cause pimples. Actually, oily skin is really good skin to have because as you get older, you have actually have fewer wrinkles because your skin is like lubricated and, and not as dry. But also, oil does not cause pimples. So I use like marula oil all the time. I use argan oil. As long as it's not like an oil, my dog's coming into the, to the film here, Tilly. <laughs> as long as it's not a heavy oil that would clog your pores, it's okay. Like olive oil or coconut oil, I definitely wouldn't recommend putting those on your face. Um, but all those other oils are great. And I think that marula oil and argan oil in particular are amazing. I just put them on, I like pat them into my skin when I'm done with my face routine at night. And I think it seals everything in and helps my products work better. Okay, the next myth is like kind of weird, but it's using your ring finger to apply eye cream. I guess the idea is this finger is like the lightest touch it's totally a myth. You just need to be gentle when you're putting on eye cream. But honestly, my other sort of like thing to go along with this is I don't even think you need eye cream. I have not used eye cream in years. I think eye cream is, they want to sell you like a tiny pot of cream for a ridiculous cost. I don't see the difference between eye cream and regular cream. I think just put your cream on your face, put it around your eyes. I think you'll be fine. I do not think you need eye cream whatsoever. Next myth is that smiling causes crow feet. So maybe this is like a teeny bit true, but honestly, it's not from smiling. It's from squinting, so wear your sunglasses. It's from age. You know, there's all kinds of factors. I don't think you should try to smile less or anything like that. Aging is going to happen, but make sure you wear some sunglasses and try not to squint in the sun and you'll be in good shape. Another thing, make sure you wear sunscreen every day, of course. I don't even know if I need to say that anymore. I think everybody does, but just a reminder. Okay, the next myth is that you can shrink your pores. This totally cannot happen. It is 100% it is a myth. I will say that clean pores do look smaller. So if you want to exfoliate, use like a chemical exfoliant, salicylic acid is great. All of that will keep your pores looking in good shape. The other thing, kind of back to my sunscreen thing is, the sun actually damages the collagen in your skin and like kind of like the walls of your pores and it makes them sag, which sounds really weird, but that could actually make your pores look larger. So make sure you're not in the sun a lot, make sure you're wearing sunscreen, do the exfoliant and your pores will be in good shape, but unfortunately you cannot shrink them. Okay, the next myth is that a lack of sleep causes dark circles. That is not true. Um, a lack of sleep maybe like for like a couple days or if you're like very tired, that may sort of cause like a little bit your eyes to look temporarily darker, but it is, it is not a permanent thing and it is not the cause of dark circles. Actually, dark circles have a number of different causes, you know, that could be from genetics. A lot of people even get dark circles from allergies. So, you know, there are different things and different reasons for dark circles, but it's not sleep. One of the things that I think will help is making sure that you remove all of your makeup at night before you go to bed. I do think that kind of leaving your makeup on could cause you know issues with your eyes. I think that you just wanna get all that makeup off and go to bed with a fresh, clean slate so that all of your cells could turn over and, and regenerate. Okay, the next myth is to never pop a pimple. You can pop a pimple, you just have to know when it's ready. So if you are like trying to like pop pimples that are not ready to go, you could definitely injure your skin, you could make it worse, you could have a scar, so, so don't do that. But you know, if you know that the pimple is ready to be popped and you see like a whitehead, for example, you can pop it, 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 will, it will heal faster and it is completely safe and fine to do as long as you do it at the right time. Okay, this next one is like crazy, but everybody says it in there, and it's that daily sunscreen could lead to a vitamin D deficiency. That is not at all the case. In fact, I've even heard the opposite, that getting a tan could cause a vitamin D deficiency. Honestly, the, the sun is so strong that I think skipping sunscreen, the risks of that far outweigh the benefits. So just put your sunscreen on. Um, you could get your vitamin D levels tested by your doctor if you're concerned, but getting a vitamin D deficiency from putting sunscreen on, I, it's just a myth. 
The next myth, which I actually found really surprising, but it's that drinking, the myth is that drinking water hydrates your skin. And I found this to be completely not true. I, for like 45 years now, have been thinking that that was completely true. But I guess that it only works if you're like severely dehydrated, like you need to go to the hospital type of dehydration. Um, apparently, just drinking your water does not go to your skin. It, it's a complete myth. Studies cannot prove that drinking water hydrates your skin, so there you go. The next myth is that if the product that you're using isn't stinging, that it's not working. This is, this is, no, no. You do not want anything that you're putting on your face to sting. I mean, sure, it could be a little bit tingly, that's okay, but if something is stinging, it means that your skin is having a reaction to it, it does not like it, you should, you should definitely wipe it off. The stinging is actually like a warning sign that you're kind of doing some damage to your skin barrier, which you, you know, you need to keep your skin barrier intact and healthy. It's what protects your skin. Your skin is your largest organ. You need to be very careful with it. So if you feel stinging from any of your products, it's a myth that it means that they're working. You should probably rinse it off and not use it anymore because it's too harsh for your skin. Okay, the next one maybe is a little bit controversial, but it's that clean beauty is safe beauty. This is is not true at all. So unfortunately, nobody is regulating the beauty products out there. It's pretty much a free for all for the manufacturers. They can call anything clean and they can say whatever they want on the label and it doesn't mean that it's good for you. It doesn't mean that it's safe. It doesn't mean that it's healthy. You really need to do your research when it comes to products and when you kind of want to understand what you want to put on your skin. Essentially, nobody's regulating the term clean beauty, so just do your research before you buy your products and don't fall for marketing claims. Okay, the next myth is that your eyebrow color should match your hair color. So, um, to that, I say, why? Why does it need to match? I have seen like blonde people with darker eyebrows. I've seen a big mix. I think that matching your eyebrows and your hair color is just like very old school. I think that it's a myth. I don't think you need to do it. I think do whatever eyebrow color you feel is flattering. Do whatever hair color that you feel like is flattering. It does not need to match. Okay, the next myth is that you can get rid of cellulite, and I'm very sad to say that this is a myth and it is not true. There's absolutely nothing you can do to get rid of cellulite. Cellulite is like an inherited thing. It's all about how your skin is put together, and there, you know, there may be things you can do like creams or treatments that sort of temporarily reduce the look of cellulite, but nothing's ever gonna get rid of it completely, unfortunately. They do say diet and exercise could help. I. I don't know about that. You know, I see like really fit thin people with cellulite, so it's hard to say. But unfortunately, the myth that you can get rid of it is just that, it's a myth. Okay, the next myth is if you pluck a gray hair, two will grow back in its place. And that is not true. You know, you've got one piece of hair and one hair follicle, only one hair will grow out of that hair follicle. But do not pluck your gray hairs because what happens is, and I made this mistake. I started getting gray hair in my 20s, just like in a certain area, and I was plucking them. What happens is when you pluck a hair, you actually damage the hair follicle. So then the hair that grows out of that hair follicle in the future ends up being raggedy and jagged, and it just completely looks out of place. It's like coarse and awful. So do not pluck your gray hairs. If you need to get rid of them and you don't want to dye your hair, you know, just take the piece of hair, use a pair of scissors and cut it as close to the root as possible. But do not, do not under any circumstances pluck your hair because then the hair that grows back in will just look terrible. Okay, the next myth is to never tweeze above your eyebrows. Um, I don't know why. Why do you want hair up your forehead? I think that's a total myth. I think if you've got sort of stray hairs that are hanging around, you know, they they aren't close to your to your eyebrow, they're maybe a little bit above it or whatever, just pluck them. I think it's fine. I don't think that um, you need to sort of have this like imaginary line that you can't pluck above. I think I think that if you've got these like errant hairs up up above your eyebrow, I think it's completely fine to pluck them and I think it's a myth that you shouldn't do that. You don't want to have hair on your forehead, right? Okay, the last myth is that hair grows faster in the summer. So unfortunately, this isn't true. I sometimes feel that it's true myself, but it is just not true. There's really like no difference in hair growth between seasons. The only time that hair actually grows faster is when during pregnancy. So, so yes, during pregnancy, hair will grow faster, but summer, winter, fall, spring, no difference. It unfortunately all grows the same length, the same amount, and it's a myth. 
Anyway, I hope you liked this video and I really hope you'll consider subscribing. Let me know in the comments below if you believe any of these myths or if you have any myths of your own that you wanna share and I'll see you next time.